Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Rocket Monday. In today's episode, we're gonna continue our series on rocket engines and today we're gonna talk about solid propellant rockets or sometimes they are generally known as solid motors. So let's understand this uh, in a bit more detail. Well, basically it's the father of rocketry. Basically this is the oldest design and when I mean old, I mean ancient. I'm saying like a, a BC kind of scenario or sometimes 1700 AD and all that. But basically it has been used in very old Chinese time and uh, it's very simple yet powerful you have to understand this like even though like the early rockets were very well inefficient uh, because they were using solid gunpowder uh, modern ones are very very powerful they are very capable beasts and they are still very simple like if you have to compare the complexity of one raptor engine just the raptor engine not the fuel tanks not the extra system that it needs to work compare that to a basically a solid srb or solid rocket booster or space shuttle this puppy is much more powerful in terms of uh, the raw newton that it can apply and in terms of how simple it is and it is very adaptable to mission basically if you want to design a solid rocket motor that is capable of lifting humans to orbit without you know killing them because of the g-force it can do that if you want to design a missile that can like you know counteract uh, inter, uh, icbm you can design a solid rocket motor that can provide 100 g's of thrust it has been done so you have to understand like it's very adaptable like it's it's something that you mold according to your need now let's uh, get a context of this basically how does this compare to a liquid system now one core advantage one primary reason why somebody is even thinking about uh, basically solid boosters is basically solid boosters are what we classify as storable rockets basically you build your icbm and you forget about it and basically you build your icbm you put it in a missile silo and then you're like i'm done i'm good like everything is done about it like you can build a let's say rocket in like 2000 and you can launch it in 2020 you don't have to worry about it now again they do have a self degradation before their polymer starts to break down and all other things do wear it down over time it will go uh, back but it's in decades rather than like you know a few minutes that you will get with spacex and all that now the that alone is big enough reason on top of that it has a lot of thrust now how the heck it has a lot of thrust one primary reason of thrust is basically action equals reaction so basically how much you are throwing back that will push you back so if you're uh, throwing back let's say one kilogram of hot gases again okay, you will get a significant amount of push that directly proportional to how hot that is or how fast that is using so best case scenario is like you can send the hot hydrogens now even if we wanted to do this we did try to do this with a space shuttle it was still not powerful enough to lift the space shuttle from the ground so we had to add uh, solid rocket motors to give that extra push now how the heck this has so much thrust one simple reason is throwing out much heavier particles basically if you uh, weighted the particles that are coming out from let's say uh, liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen system again it's just water vapor that is coming out or let's say kerosene plus uh, liquid oxygen you're still getting carbon dioxide here you're getting much heavier particulates like flat out heavy particles so it has insane amount of thrust and on top of that all of that itself has an extra pen of, uh, advantage to it it's basically cheap like to give you a context of that, basically icbm rocket part not the uh, warhead warhead is very expensive it's just the part of the rocket itself complete rocket with everything you know ready to go it's far more cheaper than a one single merlin engine you have to get like merlin engine now being mass produced that's why the cost has come down but you have to understand that like it is that different in terms of price so the military really loves this idea because military does not have to have like you know few missions in a year they have to have a scenario where they can like you know uh, load up their entire air force with like you know 700 or 800 air to air missile or uh, at least 500 to 40,000 icbms so you can understand that like, the fact that it is storable the fact that it has a lot of thrust the fact it is cheap makes it quite ideal for a lot of scenarios now let's understand the design aspect of it because it's not limited to military it's also limit, uh, you know used in civil aviation and many uh, smaller rockets also use this as an add-on so what are the design aspects of it well there are four core components again if you want to do phd you, you will find much more than that but four core components are there core component number one is casing now casing is generally treated as what we classify as pressure vessel because it's supposed to explode so you have to design it so it does not explode now that itself is like it has to handle like a rocket burning inside it so it has to handle psi as in like how much pressure on top of that they invest in significant amount of money is invested into insulating it now you might be like why the heck you want to insulate it think of it this way uh, every metal like no matter how good it is like let's say you find a very specific alloy that is like that is awesome that is like very strong this steel chromoleum alloy that is like ludicrously indestructible 
again if you start to heat it up to like let's say 500 or 600 degrees celsius it will become malleable that's how we do metal working basically we heat it up so you don't want to, this to become go from like yeah uh, indestructible tank to like wobbly wobbly uh, you know air balloon so you have to make sure you don't heat it up so the, uh, the two core components that first they make sure that it can handle the you know thermal shocks and all that everything on top of that we apply like a generous amount of insulation to make sure that no matter what happens it does not heat up because uh, to easiest way to lose structural integrity on a metal based system is basically you heat it up now that's the first thing second is igniter now this you may think like okay it may be ignited from the bottom again it's done for small rockets but for big ones generally they are lit from uh, you know top so it, it gives a much smoother burn now igniter is uh, not as simple as you would think because you have to understand the worst case scenario that can happen is basically you turn on the system and nothing happened because then this becomes a live bomb now again let's say you had a rocket which is unmanned let's say unmanned scenario and uh, you fire the py pyrotechnic and detonate okay things happened now you can you know uh, the area is safe now but again let's say you had the system so sounding rockets and all that and you press the pyrotechnic and nothing happened now this whole system is like a bomb so this is very serious consideration people spend a lot of time or a lot of redundancy and sometimes like triple redundancy has been done for igniters like if you press the go button it must go no matter what happens it does not matter whether it explodes or not it must go so otherwise it's like this is a full full flesh bomb you cannot drain this like uh, in case of liquid rocket you can drain them away you can't do anything to this so igniter is also a serious consideration then we come to the most intelligent aspect of it basically this is where your rocket engineering degree will help you is that propellant grain now propellant grain controls many things not just the thrust it controls many things and i will explain it further and then we come to the final aspect rocket nozzle nothing fancy about this again uh, it has some di different design consideration compared to a liquid system but it's more or less the same uh, stuff so these are the four core components now the first thing you will hear people say about our solid rocket motor is that it is uncontrollable now it is true in some regards it's false in other regards now it's true in the regard that you, you can like once you let it you can't control uh, like you know thrust output of it however because every mission have a different requirement let's say you have an icbm it has a different requirement then you have a satellite launch vehicle it has a different requirement let's say icbm is built to like you know handle 100 g's so you can have a uh, basically design the solid propellant grain design that is designed for maximum thrust something like this or something like this where you have a thrust which is much more even or sometimes like you want uh, like hey uh, I, this is a, like upper stage of a rocket and it has to have accelerating thrust basically like it's supposed to maintain an acceleration you will have this design so these geometry that you see this affects how much combustion is happening and based on the combustion you will get the thrust also so let's say you're designing a rocket that is like for human so it has to have a very calm g-force so you can design something like a star shape or you can have a like you know a different thrust design stars uh, like a squ squiddly star structure like th they have very fancy names so or you can have like cylinder inside a cylinder now this design has most flat thrust curve basically it's like yeah this is 50 newtons it's gonna keep adding 50 newtons until it burns out now some scenario you want okay at the beginning it's adding 50 newton at the end of its uh, burn it's adding like you know 100 newton so that's up to you so this is the whole engineering part i have provided a video where people are building the sls boosters you can check that video out there like uh, they are still relying on star like star is used a lot earlier designs used to use cylindrical design now we have utilized star because it is very powerful like uh, they can reach to like you know 100 kilometers up and like Less than 90 seconds then this is the how you control the thrust aspect basically you don't have the throttle but you do still have some control it's not like 100% controlless you can you control your mission profile using the geometry then you come to the nozzle nozzle you can employ simple gimbling i provided a high speed video basically you can see the slow motion gimbling of that and it's very complex you have to understand that like a normal nozzle has a luxury of that it has generally has something liquid running to keep it cool uh, basically generally sometimes it has liquid oxygen sometimes it has liquid methane basically something is there to keep it cool it's like okay i got this now in this scenario there is nothing to keep it cool so in terms of thickness basically how thick the metal is it's very thick why one simple reason is that uh, anything like no matter what it is how however weak it is in terms of thermal properties it takes time to melt so you design the nozzle that let's say your mission profile is like it's supposed to last three months if everything is going right it's supposed to last you will design the thermal mass basically the, how much matter is there you will design it such a way that it will take more than three minutes to melt it or structurally compromise it so they generally 
we use matter itself as a buffer system it's like rather than having a pooling system and all that it's just like yeah it's just thick enough that to structurally we get you have to run the rocket more than three minutes basically but again your mission mission is below three minutes you don't have to worry about that's the first line of defense and second time generally uh, cheaper ones will use what we call not cheaper as would say like you know different mission profile they will use a relative heat shield inside so basically this will burn away and keep taking the heat away again they also have a limit like it has to be designed to withstand for mission profile three minutes or whatever have you so you can understand by, de by design like it's generally much more thicker than no any normal uh, you know rocket engines and all that now gimbling has to be done very complicatedly because you have to make sure that the gas does not leak from where you are tilting it and generally they create a uh, virtual nozzle so the gas is supposed to be focused on this area and then you are twisting it from there now it does work right the video down below but it is very engineering problem like this throat quote unquote is a very uh, expensive part like you can have like the whole rocket is like you know few million dollars the throat parts that go into the throat will cost uh, that much uh, you know money alone because you have to understand the people generally use graphite tungsten alloys and things of that nature to make sure that it does not melt because this will be the highest heating point where the uh, convergent diversion like normal rocket engines are generally what we call convergent diversion basically you converge it into one point and then you let it diverge so that increases the speed side effect where that conversion is happening in insane amount of heating happens so this whole area sometimes have ablative system where it's like you know ablating sometimes uh, a carbon carbon composite is used to make sure that it does not melt so you have to understand like a lot of engineering goes into that now again this is uh, well good and tested and all that but now icbms have even advanced system the advanced system they have is known as liquid injection thrust vectoring basically they will have one solid design simplifying this but uh, during at the rim of the nozzle they will have like not exactly at the end at the beginning of the nozzle they will have uh, basically injectors now this injector generally uh, works on some compound of nitrogen and they will inject it into the nozzle itself so it will cause a sort of shock wave and that will force the even though the nozzle is like this the thrust is supposed to be like this because there is a gas explosion happening in the bottom it will thrust will go like this so without moving the nozzle you can literally thrust vector it so this is uh, the modern system that is used. I have provided a video of that also down below. So that's how we are controlling. Basically relying on the geometry to control the thrust curve, uh, gimbal nozzling if you want to move it around and if you want to do that very quickly, very efficiently, you can utilize liquid injection thrust factoring. Now let's talk about the uses of it. Well, in simplest term, military loves this. Like military can only utilize this. Basically, let's say this is India's ICBM Agni 5. We cannot have a scenario where it's like, yeah, uh, let's say Pakistan attacked and or some war happened with China or something like that. Yeah, yeah, hold up, hold up, we are fueling the rocket. That cannot happen. It has to be like instant, like use uh, the again, there's command and control structures and all that. But again, the moment the button is pressed, this is supposed to get on off the you know ground or off the launch pad. So it's very great for a military. There is no discussion about this. Now, what about space? Now, space, you have to understand most of the space industry was stuck at 1970s technology. Uh, that's why SpaceX was like so revolutionary. It's like one guy is like, okay, let's throw everything out of the window and let's start from scratch with modern technology and with modern alloys and all that. So they realized like solid boosters are a bad idea for space industry. Why? Well, NASA, when they built a uh, space shuttle, they thought of making the whole system reusable. That was the whole idea of space shuttle. That's why it's supposed to come back. And when it come back, they will refurbish it and send it back away so they thought of doing the same with solid booster also the idea was even though propellant would be burned the nozzle would be more or less quote unquote intact and uh, they will have the casing now the actual real space shuttle missions had this is like a, you know the solid booster detached they had a parachute they soft landed to the ocean and then they extracted it stripped the paint recovered the casing and all that here's the deal uh, after doing the very thorough financial analysis this was a waste of money they realized like it's just not worth it so that's why sls boosters are like use and throw like flat or they will throw it so you can understand that because inherently you cannot make it safe inherently you cannot make it safe you cannot control it on in any meaningful way basically if you want to land your rocket you have to have very fine control of the thrust there is no such thing in solid boosters and in terms of casing people that that's what is the idea of nasa is like hey casing is also expensive saving that would be beneficial but you have to understand that casing must have been uh, you know subjected to a lot of stress basically it must have withstand the pressure again it also gets weakened as you use it so either you have to make it very thick which will reduce your performance or you have to make it thin enough then the question is like once you have used it it's structurally compromised so flat out solid boosters cannot be reused they must have learned it the hard way another aspects of that is that solid boosters are live 
no matter what you do you cannot unlike it once it's built it's alive it can detonate at any moment in time like basically let's say uh, this landed again you can have a, mo a motorized screw or uh, like you know robotic system where you can just flush down the whole system basically from ignite uh, t taps propellant uh, kerosene and all that you can flush the whole system to be like 100 percent human safe you cannot do that with solid boosters the whole idea of the space system was stuck in the old 1970s where they could not build high uh, caliber enough liquid engines so they were like okay we have liquid engines it's not good enough but just attach you know uh, you know small srbs to send it to like you know orbit increase delta fee now it does work that's why isro is using it that's why nasa is using it in atlas series it does work it's just very inefficient so for space use it's not as efficient as you will think for military this is the only option so this was my presentation on solid rocket motors i hope you liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i would urge you to press this like press it twice to show me your extra disappointment and please leave a comment because i reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching